The next talk is going to be the context loss for image transformation with non-aligned data. And Roy Mechmes, Mechres is going to give the talk. OK, hi. Uh, my name is Roy Mechres. I'm going to present today my talk about the contextual loss. It's a joint work with Itamar Talmi and Lee Selink Mano from the Technion. So our research question is how to measure image to image similarity between two non-aligned images. Classic loss functions, such as L1, L2, or the perceptual loss, assume pixel-to-pixel -pixel correspondence. This narrowed the general task of image transformation to setups with aligned data, such as map to image, edges to shoes, etc. Even methods that do not assume per data, such as cycle gun, use the cycle, the, the cycle in, in order to compare the cycled image with the input image using an L1 norm. Non-aligned data exist everywhere. For example, in style transfer, when the style and content images are not aligned. Or in domain transfer, such as gender change. Or in person-to-person -person translation, as shown in the bottom. Our goal is to design a new loss function that will be robust to this misalignment such that it will be able to compare regions based on semantic information. To avoid the need of the geometric alignment, we find for each pixel in one image, its, correspond its match pixel in the second image. This yields the nearest neighbor field of matches. Note that we match the uh, pixels in a high dimensional deep space. The question is how to use this nearest neighbor field in order to measure the similarity between the images. We derive our motivation from recent success in the task of template matching. Recently, a new line of methods suggested for this task. Common to all this method is that the distance between the two images is a function of the nearest neighbor field. The question is how... Uh, Sorry. Uh, nearest neighbor field based similarity has many advantages over pixel to pixel loss functions. First, it is robust to this misalignment, and it can work when occlusion occurs or when outliers exist. Second, it can match the images semantically. It can, uh, yeah, in other words, it's uh, shown great move, improvement over pixel to pixel loss functions. The question is how to uh, bring these ideas in a loss function term to train a convolutional neural network. Let me now explain how we design the contextual loss using the nearest neighbor field. So our pipeline is quite simple. We feed a CNN with an input image and generate an output image. We then extract deep features and represent each image as a set of points in a high dimensional space. We then measure the similarity between the images as a similarity measure between these two point sets. Here, I mark uh, by red arrows the nearest neighbor field. Our loss function is going to use these red arrows and the associate weight. Let me show you how the nearest neighbor looks like when the images are, not si are similar and not similar in this 2D illustration. So when the images are similar, good one-to-one -one match exists, as you can see here. And when the images are not similar, many-to-one match exists. In other words, images are similar when one-to-one -one match exists. We start by computing the full affinity metrics between the two point sets representing the images. The nearest neighbor field is obtained by taking the max over each affinity. That's here the max over each core. Our loss function is then defined as a log over the, ma over the sum of the max affinities. The question is how to define good affinities. So let's go back to the 2D illustration. The classic method to define pairwise distances, or pairwise affinities, is to take the distance between the points. If we do that, then these two pair of points will have the same affinity. But this is not what we want. It misses the fact that one-to-one -one match exists on the left and many-to-one match exists on the right. 
That is, it ignores the statistics of the image and it ignores the context of each point. To incorporate the context of each point, we use what we call contextual affinity. We consider the context by normalizing the affinities in a softmax manner. The normalization is done over each row in the affinity matrix. So let's look again at the example. This orange circle, the point, have one to one match to a single blue triangle. Thus, it should have high affinity. Our normalization captured that. On the other hand, this orange circle has many to one match since it is close to many blue triangles. Thus, it should have low affinity and our normalization captured that as well. So to summarize, our loss function has two steps. First, we normalize each row using the uh, softmax contextual normalization. And then we take the max over each column. This forms the nearest neighbor field. Let's go back to the pipeline. So we measure the similarity between the two point sets representing the images using the contextual loss I just described. We show four different applications all with non-aligned data. At each application, we adopt a state-of-the-art architecture or optimization problem and replaced only the loss function. So let me start from the first application. We call it semantic style transfer. We adopt the well-known optimization problem of Gatiss et al. neural style and replaced both loss terms, the content term and the style term with our uh, loss function, with the contextual loss function. Let me show you some results. So here we have Mr. Bean as the input or content and Hillary Clinton as style and we get something like that. Or we can also move or uh, transfer Hillary's uh, tick lips and blue eyes to Obama. Or give Obama the humorous look of Mr. Bean. This example I really like because it transfer Obama's uh, mole to the nearest chick. We also tried to give Hillary a presidential look. Not sure we succeeded. Our method works uh, quite nice also on animals, for example. Here you can see a comparison with two state-of-the-art methods. And you can see that our uh, method achieved quite realistic results. In our second application, we changed the setting a bit. Instead of the optimization problem, we train a CNN using a video of the person talk. At each iteration, we match between the output image and a single still target image, as this Trump cartoon on the right. We use additional loss term between the input and the output in order to control the pose. Here, again, we use the contextual loss. And here is a result of an example result. And this is with a different target image. The baseline is something like using a gram loss to take to, as, a, as a style term and the perceptual loss as the content term between the output and the image and the input. Our third application is gender, gender change in the uh, field of domain transfer. Here we train the CNN without cycle and without gun. At each iteration, we use a random male and female pair for training. Since our loss function is not specially bound, it can match any two images of faces. Again, we use additional loss term between the input and the output to control the identity. And here, is, and here are some results of male to female and on the opposite direction. Our last application is person to person transformation. We call this puppet control since after training we can change the pose of person A in the input and generate image of person B in the output in the same pose. And here are some results. Oops, sorry. At the top you can see the input image of person A, below it our results, and three other baselines. Cycle gun, peaks to peaks, and our architecture 
the architecture that we use, CRN, with a traditional loss function. I will show you some more uh, ideas in the poster, just to mention them. So we use the contextual loss also for realistic reconstruction. This is shown in our uh, archive paper, maintaining natural image statistics with the contextual loss. Those of you are familiar with the perceptual metric paper from CVPR 18, we uh, changed the setting there a bit and replaced the L2 norm with the contextual loss without any further training. And you can see that it's outperformed the uh, L2 norm. We also, saw, uh, we also drove some theoretical connection between the KL divergence of the underlying distribution of the points and our contextual loss. And last, we're showing an additional uh, application of perceptual super resolution as shown in this image. Small promotion, we're going to have tomorrow uh, a workshop about perceptual image uh, restoration and manipulation. We'll be happy if you're going to join us. And I will finish with some more results. We also have a normal estimation this is an additional super resolution uh, result. Style transfer with different style images. Normal estimation rendering. And more style result. OK, two take home messages. So first, the nearest neighbor field of matches form a strong cue for similarity. And the second one is that the contextual loss I just described can measure the similarity between two non-aligned images. Thank you. All right, if you have any questions, please come to the microphone. In the meantime, I have a question. Um, so can you tell us a little bit how, this, uh, how, how your loss scales with the size of the data set and with the size of the images? Uh, like for a specific task that I describe or? Let's say for the unpaired image to image translation. Uh, well, we use uh, Celeb A, so it have many images, I guess. Um, so it, I think it worked quite nice also for larger uh, images. Maybe if the uh, images contain additional semantic information, let's say there are not uh, two faces, there are one image of a face and another image of a face, a bus and a cow, the semantic matching might be uh, uh, wrong at some points and might cause artifacts. But if good, there is a good uh, semantic match, it should work quite nice even if the database is large and whatever. Any other questions? All right, let's thank, let's thank our speaker again.